Hi guys, um, so as we start doing more of our off-grid stuff, um, it's time to upgrade our solar system a little bit. Uh, we've been running our little house so far with just a couple of 12 volt batteries that were pulled out of a bass boat. So um, they're getting kind of on the weak side and uh, it's time to do an upgrade. going to be the start of our storage for our uh, system. What we got is a couple of server batteries. They seem to be well packed in here. So there's a couple of cables here that uh, can be used to parallel the batteries together. Now we got a couple of rack mount ears and the hardware to install those and the silica pack okay these are uh, 100 amp hour batteries and they're 48 volt but they charge up to 51.2 so they're claiming they got 5120 watt hours available on them and these measure about six and an eighth inches so they're supposed to take up uh, 3.5 rack units and it's 17.4 inches wide so about seven sixteenths and then they should be about standard uh, another 18 inches deep nice thing about server rack batteries is that they have uh, communications built into them you can set a switch to make them unique to each other so you can keep track of individual batteries um, and show your state of charge if there's any kind of alarms or anything on them and uh, it's got a breaker over here turn that on Kind of hard to see it but it does go through a self check and then uh, it's got a partial charge in it since they were being shipped okay so the idea with uh, using server batteries is that it's pretty easy modular system they're a nice compact uh, unit at 100 pounds a piece they're kind of annoying to uh, move around in that so it seemed like the best solution was the rack mount batteries let's put them into a, a server rack only problem is I'm not going to use this many batteries but I do want to leave some expandability so I got this uh, used computer rack or server rack and uh, this is a 42 unit height rack so um, it's got a lot of slots in it but I don't need anywhere near this height we're gonna cut it down and turn it into a smaller unit so it doesn't take up quite so much space it did come with some interesting uh, wiring boxes here with breakers on them that uh, fed all the computer components that had previously been in it and uh, a lot of this is bolted together so um, I'm gonna go ahead and break this thing down and uh, we'll see what we got and then figure out a way to uh, make it a little bit more compact It's a little bent.
We're going to save all these shelves. This will be perfect for the batteries to rest on top of. cage nuts installed in them and the ones that came with the battery are of a bigger size so we will need to take all these out in order to use the correct size nuts inside of the cabinet here just to see uh, exactly how much room we had and how parts were going to physically space out and the shelves are kind of setting the pace on things here um, so it does create a space up in here these holes aren't lining up really great so I don't know if I need to modify the bracket or if we just space up the battery in order to make them line up better but we'll figure that out added shelves in for up to six more batteries on it I'm not sure where we want to go but might as well leave the flexibility and then this shelf up here is just showing the uh, top of things right now the last battery will actually mount onto this shelf here so we're gonna go ahead and I think and cut this thing off and then I'm thinking over on the back side here uh, we got enough depth in here that we could panel this off and uh, mount our inverter in there and the solar controller and uh, uh, bus bar that we have for all of this so it should really um, kind of work as just a standalone solar generator. Okay, we put some uh, cement backer board inside of our cabinet. This is kind of a isolator. And we mounted the inverter bracket up inside of the cabinet. Now it's time to see if this thing will hang on here. doesn't really have very much strength to it so um, it's pretty fragile so I've got a piece of leftover server rack um, that I trimmed down and made into the top bracket and then added some angle down to the bottom that's supporting the bottom of it and then uh, we'll put additional pieces through the middle here to support other parts so that uh, basically everything's just on metal support and the backer board's just an isolator there. I decided to go ahead and lay the rack over on its side. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier for laying out parts, but this is where everything ended up getting mounted. Um, this is the bottom of the inverter. And uh, what we got for an inverter is the Victron Energy Multi Plus 2. It's a 48 volt inverter, 3000 volt amps, and it has a 35 amp uh, charger in it. Um, so, along with the solar that we can charge it with, we'll also be able to use a generator or any other um, AC plug in source to charge it up. You can see in here you've got a couple of terminals for your battery hookups. You've got power out here. There's some other auxiliary power outs, uh, all kinds of different control slots for 
various features on it. We've got 150 volt 35 amp solar charger here. It's a smart charger so it has uh, Bluetooth in it uh, so I'll be able to make changes to settings and see how things are operating. And down here we got this 1000 amp bus bar and the cover is already loose on it so you can see what's inside. It has these massive uh, bus bars. These caps are removable and uh, you can chain these things together by bolting them onto the end of another unit. Um, they have these that have electronics in them that'll show you which fuses have blown out if you're using fuses. This block doesn't use fuses in it but it's possible to add same size bolts into these holes here after removing this plastic cover and uh, that can be converted so that it can use fuses. So you have wires that can come in through this slot right here and connect into this bus bar here which is the black ground and then you can set another wire over the top of it and go over to this other side or you could also put the bolt in here and then connect on to a fuse here so it's a lot of different options in there um, if you just want to keep things simple well this is the battery rack with all the solar components installed just a quick view of what it uh, looks like we're going to haul this out to the mountain um, I'll take it apart and repaint the frame on it since it got a little scratched up and welded on and all that but uh, I did put these in the wrong location so I have to move them so that I can fit a rack up in the top but that's a minor problem and these are the shelves that the batteries will go on to have uh, supports back behind the components for the heavier things okay just to summarize the basic setup that we have here in our uh, solar battery box we have the main terminal strip right here which is going to have the positive and negative from the battery attached to that and there's going to be two heavy cables that will go from here up to the terminals inside the inverter and that will provide the 120 volt inverted power over on this side from this terminal which will go down into this breaker box we've got 25 amps that will be available at this breaker box I broke it into two 15 amp circuits and that will end up going down to these two outlets down here and then to charge the batteries back up, we have this uh, charge controller. So there'll be two wires coming in here to provide the power for the solar panels. And these two wires will go back over to the appropriate terminals on these bus bars to charge the batteries back up through the, through the main cable. So that is the entire system for now. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, if you want to see this be completed, uh, definitely do subscribe or uh, hit the notification so that uh, it will let you know when our next video comes on about this. And uh, we'll see you later.